Hey everybody, Zach here for another edition of the Friday Fishing Report for Pacific Angler. Um, last week, Jordan did a scud video and Matt figured he'd pin us against one another. Um, and we'd see what we would both come up with. Now, I really smashed up my finger. I'm not going to show it too bad, it looks pretty gross. Um, on a vegetable peeler about a week or two ago and it's started to heal itself now. So I've got full dexterity again. Matt, I think Matt was trying to catch me short-handed. Um, during this challenge, but we're just going to roll with it. Um, so in the hook, or in the vise I should say, I have a size 10 scud hook here. And the bead on there is a glass bead. And this is a medium orange one. Just to give you an idea, you can get these at any craft store. We carry them at the shop as well. Um, you can use a non-glass bead as well. Or you can use dubbing for this pregnant egg sacky kind of spot. So Jordan did a regular scud. I'm going to do a pregnant scud, if you will. Um, Similar pattern, slightly different. Um, kind of an easy one. So for my thread, I've just got some olive UTC 70. I'll try to keep that gross finger out of frame for you guys. And I'm just going to dress the hook here. And just kind of come back up. I'm going to put a rib on this fly, which is just going to be some ultra wire small size and black hopefully I can get this out of here easily there we go so a couple inches will get me a couple flies to say the least just break that off just so you can see it ultra wire small black and I'm gonna tie this in at about the midway point that's kinda where my my pregnant egg sac is gonna sit I'm just going to tie that in along my side of the fly, like so, down the bend a bit, there we go, kind of seat that there. Now I'm going to use an olive dubbing for the body of this fly, you can use whatever you want, I happen to have ice dub and olive on hand, so I'm just going to grab some here, and I'm going to dub a nice body. hear any clanging or stuff like that, Lacey's just making dinner, so hopefully the camera doesn't pick that up. And we're going to start kind of small and thin and we're going to gradually work up a taper here. And we're going to pick this all out. And once we're kind of done here, so we've got it kind of a little bit thinner at the butt end, get to be a little bit thicker near the middle. I'm going to put a little bit more on there. Actually, Lacey, if you could do me a hand and just grab me a popsicle stick with some Velcro on it. When you get a, yeah, when you get a chance here. Just on my tying desk. Sorry, I'm tying away from my desk. Just more room to film. Should be a popsicle there somewhere with some Velcro on it. I knew I was forgetting something. Perfect, thank you. So as you can see, we've got kind of a small little taper going on here. It's a little bit thinner at the back, works its way up to be a bit thicker to about the halfway point. I'm going to slide that bead over. I'm going to tuck my thread over in front, over the top, take a few wraps, like so. And then I'm going to come in here and do a reverse taper of dubbing, so thicker at the bead, and work my way thinner towards the head as we go here. Keep that gross finger of mine out of the way. You can do this in a dubbing loop too, but when I find, when you do a dubbing loop, it traps a lot of the dubbing. So dubbing it onto the thread by twisting it is going to make um, the picking out of this fly a little bit easier. I think just kind of finish off that taper, kind of like so. That'll do. And I'm not going to whip finish yet. I still need to deal with my thread or my wire. So I'm just going to come in on the top here. I'm just going to kind of trim a little bit of a flat spot, maybe a little bit on the sides as well. So I am not going to use scud back on this one. I'm going to use some UV resins. So what I like to kind of do is just kind of squish it on the sides just to make it a little bit flatter. 
any stragglers sticking off the top, trim them down. Kind of like so, that will do. And I'm going to use the Solar Res Thin on this. I think Jordan likes to use the thick to build up bodies and stuff. I like to do a little bit smaller, uh, smaller or thinner layers, I should say. And if I can get the stuff to come out here, just going to do a quick little layer, kind of let it sink in to the resin a little bit. And then I'm going to zap it with my light. This is going to create a little base for you. That resin is going to grip onto the dubbing. Perfect. I'm going to put another thin layer on here to kind of even stuff out a little bit. A little bit thicker on the top and then we get a little bit thinner towards the front and the rear of the fly. Do a little bit on the sides if I can. Just kind of even it out. The beauty of the rotary vices. You can play with this resin a little bit easier. Give that a good cure. I'm not going right to my thread wraps because I still need to build a head on this fly as well. And you're noticing I'm building up a bit of a bump here. Now this creates kind of a really cool look of the fly. So I think that's fairly clear. Love that solar res, dries tack free. I'm going to take just one full wrap at the back and then I'm going to start to rib my fly here. So this look is kind of cool as it will, I don't know if I want to, yeah, I'll kind of cross over the bead there. Is this rib is going to actually be elevated through the fly once I put my final layer of resin on it. Try to catch that segment where I want. Now we get. Take your time when you're doing this. You want every wrap to seat nicely. Kind of like that. Quickly come in here, trap my wire. wraps. I'm not going to use my scissor for my wire, it destroys them, so I just wiggle and break that off. I'm going to come right into a whip finish. Just like so. And now I'm going to put a final layer of resin on here. It's going to kind of help protect the wire, adds a little bit of magnification onto that ribbing. Kind of definitely smooths everything right out. Taking my fly tying course, you probably see me tie this fly. I kind of demo resins on the last day, and I usually tie a simple scud like this to kind of show off what you can do. And we're going to give that a little zap just to cure it all up. There's a reason I call this the glass scud. It's kind of kind of it looks like it's. Uh, made of glass. But believe me, this stuff is quite durable. Let that sit for a second. I'm just going to touch it, just make sure. Yep, that's fully cured. Looks pretty cool. Hopefully that effect's coming up on camera for you. And then I'm going to take my Velcro brush here. Try to pick out some of that dubbing just for the legs. Really get in there. That's basically what I want. And I'll kind of pull them down. And I'll just kind of trim them roughly to where the hook point is. A little bit more in the front if I can. Got a little bit there. That's good enough for me. And there you have it, the glass scud. Really like this pattern, it's kind of cool. That's a lot of cool effects. Again, you can do it with dubbing instead of a bead in the middle. I just think the, the bead looks kind of cool for that egg sac and that UV resin really helps to magnify it, make it look a little more, um, have the pattern, gives the, gives the pattern a little more depth than it normally would. So there you have it, 
Pregnant Scud. Um, hope you guys stay safe, and we'll see you guys next week.